In this video, I'll show you some ways that you can use the brush tool in Adobe Lightroom CC. After you've made global edits that affect the entirety of a photo, you may want to edit individual parts of the image too. I'll walk you through how to do this with brushes, along with the reasons behind why you might want to make certain changes to your image. Before you begin, I do suggest cleaning your monitor or screen and turning up the brightness since you'll be looking at values and light. Now click on the brush icon, the fourth one down on the right, to open up the brush panel. Under this drop down, you will see more options that are specific to your brushes. Use Feather to soften or harden a brush. Use Flow to change the rate the paint streams out. And use Density to control the strength of the paint coverage. And checking Auto Mask can help the paint stay inside the lines. We'll take a look at the sliders below as well, though depending on the photo, every slider might not be useful, but luckily most are self-explanatory. Using the command or control and plus signs on my keyboard, I'm going to zoom into the focal point of this image, and I'll use my cursor to click and drag brush strokes over this light source. If you don't see a red mask, you can go up to the menu bar and click View, Edit Tools, Show Overlay, and then Cycle Overlay or you can use the O key on your keyboard to turn on and off the red mask. As I brush, you can see that it's going outside of the light, so I'll hit delete or backspace on my keyboard to remove that. Over in the brush options, you can bring down the amount of flow. That will give you more control over the paint. However, you might need to overlap the strokes quite a bit to get more coverage. You can use the eraser brush to remove any areas that you've accidentally brushed over. And if the eraser doesn't work, use your overlay or O key to make sure you have the correct brush work selected before you erase. The blue pin or circle with the white dot will show you what patch of brush work you have selected. In this example, I only have one selection of brush work, but as I add more, you'll see more of those blue pins. Continuing where you left off with the brush icon, make sure that patch is selected and you can continue painting right over that same brushwork. You can use the size slider over in the panel to adjust the size of the brush, or a quicker way is to use the bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket will make the brush circle smaller and the right bracket makes it larger. Click Command or Control minus sign on your keyboard to zoom out, or you can click Fit to see the entire image for the next adjustments. In your panel, you can use the sliders to make adjustments to the temperature, tint, exposure, etc. And notice that it's adjusting the patch where I applied the brushwork, not the entire image. Moving these sliders can impact the overall amount of the adjustment to that function. And with some of these sliders, you might see little to no change whatsoever. And I'm clicking in the center of the circle to reset the sliders. I'll demonstrate this section of sliders a bit later on. There's another way to work with color, so I'll skip hue for now. Let's take a look at saturation. This slider will turn a color into grayscale or it will intensify a color. I'll demonstrate sharpness in a moment, but my favorite tool is Colorize. When you turn it on, you can move the circle and change the color variant, which can be a lot of fun. I want the lamp in this photo to be a stronger focal point, so I'll warm up the color and then come up to temperature and make that warmer as well, so the lamp pops against the background. Next, I'll click on the plus sign to add another patch of brushwork to the window in the background. And as I'm painting, I'm feeling like the flow of the paint is a little weak, so I'll go over to the panel and increase that and try again. Yes, that feels a bit better. I'm getting a bit better coverage with that flow amount. I'm also going to demonstrate density on the top part. So let me turn down the density and then brush over this top here. And you might see that the amount of coverage now is lessened. So I'll increase that to bring that back up. And I'm going to need to use my eraser tool to erase the part of the window that the paint is outside of. I'll use my bracket keys on my keyboard to adjust the size to clean up those edges. 
The auto mask feature that I had you check at the beginning is there to help keep the paint within the lines, but sometimes that feature has difficulty reading the image. Notice that when I take the eraser brush over the lamp, it's not erasing the brushwork that I did previously. Turning on the overlay shows that I have two blue pins indicating the two different patches of brushwork. Therefore, what you do to one overlay is not going to impact the other. Clicking the blue pins will allow you to switch between the two. And the one with the white dot in the center is the one that's active. You can also click on a pin and delete the brushwork at any time. I'll switch from the eraser back to the brush tool and I'll add more coverage to my window. I'll turn off the overlay so we can see changes in real time. And let's go down to texture, which helps smooth that part of the image. But I don't see much of a difference in this example. Clarity, however, you can see a change in the contrast of the midtone values in the window. And dehaze can add or remove haziness to your image, which works well with these windows. Scrolling down to sharpness now, you can use it to soften or harden part of the image. This is helpful to change the depth of field. The other sliders won't make much of a difference in this image, but I encourage you to try them out with your photos. Then I'll scroll to my favorite, Colorize, just to see what my options are for colors. Next, I want to add a bit of brushwork to the molding in this picture. And I want to adjust the density for better coverage as I'm painting. When you want to create a straight, horizontal, or vertical brush stroke, you can hold down the Shift key on the keyboard as you click and paint down. It's very helpful to give you more control. And before I started this video, I made basic edits to the image using geometry to remove any perspective distortion, ensuring straight vertical lines, helping make this step easier. Turning off the overlay, I would like to give the color of this molding a bit more of a complementary tone to the orange walls. So I'm going to use Colorize to give it a bit more blue, and then go up to the temperature control and add some more cool tones this way as well. And I want to darken the overall exposure of the moldings for a bit more contrast. Next, I'll show you another use for the brush. I'm going to go over to my healing brush and use my clone tool. And I find this part of the window a bit distracting. So I'm going to replace this part using a copy of another section of the window pane. And then because this window has mainly gray tones, I want to go back to my brushes and then I want to bring down the saturation all the way to gray scale. And now when I brush over those two sections, the cloned and the original, I can remove some of the colored bits and try to blend the two more. I also want to use another desaturated brush to remove the color that I see on the statue. I want it to stand out from the orange walls. And maybe I'll do the same with the framing around the statue as well. I just want to help make this a second focal point in this image. However, I don't want it to be completely grayed out. So now that I've neutralized it, I can change it from a warmer tone to a bit cooler tone. Again, I'll use my colorize feature to be able to do that. So I'll check out the warms or maybe I'll go crazy and I'll turn it lime green. The possibilities are endless. And that's what's great about using brushes because you can personalize all the individual parts of your picture, taking it from the overall orange tones in this example to a more visually complex image. But now that I'm starting to finish up, I see that the molding doesn't work so well. So I'm going to turn on my overlays, select that pin and make some final adjustments. So I always suggest you look over your image and see if there's any tweaking you need to do to make it more cohesive or complementary. And when finished with my image, I'm going to export it and save it to the Creative Cloud, putting it in the folder that I made for this unit. So that's just a few ways that you can use the brush tool to adjust colors and values in Adobe Lightroom CC.